Hello and welcome to this roundup of my five favorite romance novels that I read this month. I'm Olivia, your favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot. You're watching Random Olive Reads. First up is Someone to Trust by Mary Balog. This is book five of the Westcott series. Now this book starts at the same Christmas family gathering that ends the previous book. Now by this point, it makes the most sense to have read the series in order to keep all of the Westcott family members straight, even though a family tree is printed in the beginning of each book. Now Colin is the younger brother of Wren from book three and joining in on the Westcott holiday celebrations. While he's enjoying the celebrations, he is a bit wistful that his own family does not have this sort of affection for each other and considers searching for a bride next season and taking responsibility for his estate where his mother currently resides with her entourage. While he is considering the young eligible ladies in attendance as potential brides, he's mostly enamored of Elizabeth, who is the older sister of Alex, who is Ren's husband, and nine years older than Colin. Elizabeth is widow to a man who turned violent with drink and has not been interested in remarriage. However, seeing all the happy couples around her has made her lonely, and she may actually consider marriage this upcoming season. Colin and Elizabeth form a little bit of a connection with good conversation and light flirting and even a kiss, but Elizabeth feels too old for Colin and Colin feels too immature for Elizabeth. They do eventually agree to dance together at every ball they attend during the season. When we get to London a few months later, they fulfill the promise of the dance, but are actively courting other people while Colin contends with his mother's meddling and machinations. It's interesting to see how these two people end up having honest conversations about their traumatic past and somehow end up together to everyone's surprise. And as always, I love the ever-supportive Westcott family. Marrying Off Morgan McBride by Amy Berry is book two of the McBrides of Montana series taking place in 1880s America. Meddlesome little sister Junebug is added again by putting an advertisement for a mail-order bride for oldest brother Morgan. She can feel Morgan itching to get back out on that cattle trail and hopes to snare him with a wife to keep him at home. Now Pip, short for Epiphany, answers the ad and sets off with her granny to come meet Morgan. She has been overlooked and rejected her whole life due to her plain looks, but hopes that Morgan will appreciate her skillful cooking and housekeeping skills. With Junebug's scheming and dishonesty, both Pip and Morgan are in for surprises and disappointment, despite both of their attraction for the other. When Morgan tells Pip to go home without listening to her at all, she decides to confront him and demand that the marriage go through. He's still packing up to leave town, though. He has no intention of changing his plans. This book was funny and sweet and heartbreaking in all the right places, and we get to finally see Pip stand up for herself, and Morgan start to listen more than he talks. And also, Pip's granny is the absolute best. Portraits, Passion, and Other Pastimes by Charlie Lane is a book one of the Art of Love series. A financially irresponsible Marquess puts his family's livelihood in danger by overspending on art and frivolity rather than take care of his estate. When his eldest son, Raph, learns the financial state when the steward up and quits, he ends up shouldering most of the burden of responsibility to keep the family afloat. Unfortunately, he also needs to dismiss his sister's governess, Matilda, because there's no money to pay her. But he also promises that he'll always help her find a suitable position. Fifteen years later, the Marquess has passed away and Raph is still struggling with all of the bills. His father had donated all of his very expensive art, leaving none of it for his children to sell except for five items, which each person must earn by creating a piece of art themselves and then presenting it to their mother for approval. With no talent and not enough time for frivolity, Raph knows that he will not be able to come up with anything that will meet his mother's requirements. 
never mind the loud wailing and grieving that his mother is doing to distract him. He decides he's going to hire his mother a companion and then seeks out Matilda as the best candidate. She has served as a governess and then a companion in the past 15 years and will soon move to her own cottage. While she initially rejects the offer from Rath, the lady she's currently serving suggests that they go together to help the Marchioness with her grief. Rath is also attempting to save the estate by marrying a rich heiress, but he's mostly distracted. He doesn't feel anything for the ladies he's courting. He's hoping to not have to do that. So with everyone back at the Marquess's country estate, Raph and Matilda spend more time together. They try to resist their attraction, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, Matilda is used to a life of work and solitude, and Raph needs to marry for money. It's interesting to see all of the family interactions and and dynamic in the story, and how much they all support each other, despite everyone having begrudging feelings towards the old Marquess's spending habits. Forever Your Rogue by Aaron Langston is a standalone novel. There is a novella that goes with this that takes place uh, several decades before it, but uh, you'll have to get that separately. Widowed Viscountess Cora is being challenged over the custody of her two young children, and we mean like very young, like four and two. She comes up with a scheme for a fake fiancé to help bolster her upcoming case to retain physical custody. Nate is the second son of an earl and a dissolute rake who has been cut off from funds from his older brother. Knowing that Nate needs the money and that he owes her a favor, Cora sets up a contract with Nate for the arrangement, which includes him coming to her country estate for two weeks while her in-laws are also in residence. What follows is a slow realization for Nate of Cora's strength and determination, and him figuring out that he can't just be a screw-up forever. While he interacts with the kids and supports Cora's struggles, Nate does a lot of growing up himself, even if Cora doesn't quite trust him yet. Now, this book gets a lot of hype for being very swoony, and it certainly is, but the winning point for me is how believable Nate's transition into fatherhood is and that he realizes he can bring support and happiness into this family that he very much wants to be a part of. And lastly, we have What a Gentleman Wants by Caroline Linden, which is book one of the Reese Family series. Marcus, who is the Duke of Exeter, is always getting his twin brother out of scrapes, but this one's pretty bad. So younger twin David gets into a drunken carriage accident and ends up in the care of a vicar's widow. Now he offers her a marriage of convenience, but at the last minute he kind of chickens out and he forges his twin brother's name on the marriage register instead. Now, Hannah has agreed to marry David since she doesn't have much alternative after the death of her husband. She brings her daughter with her to London, where they plan to set up house while David is away on business. Of course, Hannah doesn't know that David is the brother of a duke and that he signed Marcus's name on the marriage. When Marcus finds out and he confronts Hannah, at first he wants to pay her off and make her go away, but then he convinces her to stay with him temporarily to appease his overexcited sister and stepmother. It's a whole tangle of lies, but Marcus and Hannah are attracted to each other under all of that stubborn bickering. We add in a side plot with counterfeit money, and we have some potential for danger, which is really interesting to read and see how these two people team up against the villain. Thank you so much for watching this video. Links to all of these books are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.